Well, here's my prediction for Wilder Fury 2. I think if you take a look at it, now, I know what happened in the first fight. Uh, everybody wants to call it a controversial ending and yada, yada, yada. Wilder's a better fighter. Wilder's the bigger puncher. Uh, to me, it's almost like a football game. You can analyze it to death, but in the end, you got to go with what you know. And I think everybody knows that Wilder is, to me, the more complete fighter. Um, Fury can be frustrating, <laughs> you know, no pun intended. Um, and I'm just not quite sure, though, he can withstand certainly what Wilder's going to bring in the second fight. Because I think Wilder's on maybe even more of a mission than he was in the first fight. I'm not going to say he took him for granted, because I don't think that was the case. But I think now there's something to prove um, to anybody who doubt it and people want to debate who's the best. You know, had Anthony Joshua won, I think that may have changed the bigger debate overall. But I'm going to go with Wilder, and I'll go with Wilder in a knockout. Six rounds. Six rounds. All right. My well, a little while. A little while. <laughs> a little while. A little while. All right. <laughs> oh, okay, Kurt. Now, uh, to piggyback off that, you talked about the first fight. Do you feel that the ref, Jack Reese, should have stopped the fight on the second knockdown? I was just sitting in a box, and I thought that he literally died in the ring. How yeah, about no, you? No, I, I don't know about thinking he died in the ring, but I, it, the fight should have been stopped. Right. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, I think that comes back to that's part of the, okay, you know what? You don't want to stop it. I'm going to make sure that there's no question this time. And I think that's what part of uh, Wilder's mission will be. That's why you choose to go to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick questions. Your observations about the game coming up Sunday. Um, I think this is a great matchup. You know, usually, I was saying earlier that you kind of have a good feeling when you get to the week of the Super Bowl, which team is the better team. I don't know if you do this year. Probably top to bottom, San Francisco is more complete. Um, but... I think Kansas City's more dangerous. So I think we're going to have a game that, unless somebody makes a bunch of mistakes, a bunch of turnovers, we'll probably go down the fourth quarter final um, possession or two. Um, I'm going to save my pick because I honestly don't know as we sit here on Tuesday. I, go, I can convince myself both ways. I do think this is going to be a great coming out party for uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, people are going to get to see a lot about him, and he will be a star, win or lose, after this game. I guarantee you that. I heard that. And another question for you. Now, you've been working with Jimmy and crew for forever. How did you feel when Jimmy was announced to the Hall of Fame? Oh, that was one of the – I've been hosting the pregame show at Fox for 14 years, and that was the number one moment out of, what, we do 20-something shows a year for 14 years? So 250 shows. I mean, no question. It was so emotional because it meant so much to him, and Jimmy's a guy who likes to pretend that, ah, I don't care, I'm just an old – gruff football coach but we all knew how much it meant to him and I hope people could see that and the emotion that we had and the joy that we had for him so I mean without doubt that's the number one moment uh, I'm so happy for him it's so deserved should have happened a long time ago but you know what everything happens when it's supposed to I guess and one last question thoughts on Kobe Bryant's passing yeah you know I mean it's tough I live in Los Angeles and I, I was telling someone that he before he passed was probably the most popular athlete in the last 30 years for sure in Los Angeles. And maybe, you know, you'd have to talk to some of the old timers, but maybe in the history of Los Angeles sports. So it, it was such an emotional thing. I flew from L.A. to here, landed in Miami, and was waiting at baggage claim when I got, I got a text saying that, you know, he had died in a helicopter crash. And um, it's just sad that any time anybody dies, it's sadder any time anybody dies young. And it's even worse when young people are involved as well, because not only his daughter, but there are other people on that plane. And that's one thing I also hope that people remember. There are nine people lost, and all their families are grieving, and they lost children and, and husbands and wives and that kind of thing. Um, but it's just a tragic situation. And, you know, for me, a part of it is just trying to remember the good times and the legacy and, and the positive aspect that he brought not only as a player, but certainly people call it his second career that he was doing as a father and, and the public image that he um, had out there and not letting that die just because... You know, he's no longer with us physically. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Kurt. What's up, sports fans? Breon Page here with Fanatics Viewed. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed watching and you want to see more content, subscribe down below.